Hi, I'm Jess, and I've been practicing law for almost a decade, but my passion does not solely lie with the law. I love crystals, the moon, intuition, healings, and card readings. There is often a stigma attached to being considered alternative, a free spirit, carefree, a persona that seems polar opposite to the corporate world. It seems almost impossible to show up somewhere in the middle, but that's exactly what I've spent the last few years exploring. Merging these two worlds, the business and the bohemian, and becoming the corporate hippie. In film, lawyers are portrayed as strong, confident, and even intimidating. They are powerful and can solve every issue imaginable. But just because this is the way that we are portrayed, is this the way that we actually feel? This perception amidst the hard reality of stress, depression and burnout, which is so prevalent amongst the legal profession. I am sure many of you have heard of the benefits of positive thinking and how such thinking can benefit our mental health, but I wonder who has actually mastered this skill. I say skill because I believe that it takes dedication and a lot of hard work to truly have a positive mindset particularly when you have been trained otherwise. Being trained as a lawyer is in effect being trained to spot problems, to read notes and to find the issues in the story. We are not called upon to join in the celebrations and success. We are involved in the drama, the issue, the problem. We are often the bearer of bad news. We have inadvertently, through our studies, been trained to think of problems everywhere. When this line is blurred, it can be very difficult to stop this way of thinking in our personal life. In our career, looking at situations through an inquisitive lens is extremely helpful, but it can be challenging to stop looking for issues and instead be stopping to smell the roses in our personal life. However, we can learn to return to a positive mindset we can learn to use our analytical mindset for the workday and with the help of some hippie ways, learn to be more positive in our personal life. But why do we need to be more positive? In my late 20s, I began to suffer from mild alopecia, a condition that can lead to ball patches on your head. I was very fortunate that my condition was mild I remember once just crying in the shower when I couldn't even get a brush through my hair. I was on medication and cortisone needles injected into the different spots in my head and nothing worked. I was told that there were many different causes and one of which could be stress. Sometimes you genuinely have no idea what the cause of your stress is. I never had a single major trigger. I had a great life and wonderful people around me. My career had always been challenging. The nature of a lawyer, in many respects, being part of the corporate world, is dealing with problems and dealing with stress. Before my hair loss, I had never really considered the consequence of stress on my health. The effect of stress. We know that life is fast paced, ever changing and often competitive. We focus so heavily on our career and climbing the corporate ladder that we can easily fall into a statistic for depression, anxiety or worse. We don't want to be one of those statistics. Yale School of Medicine notes that over time, stress can even increase the risk of depression, anxiety, heart disease and type 2 diabetes. One of the ways in which we can reduce our stress is by positive thinking. The term positive thinking is by no means a new breakthrough. It is the ability to maintain a positive mindset and what we need to explore further is how to turn positive thoughts into positive actions with practice and dedication. So first let's consider just some of the reasons why we might struggle to think positive. When a client comes in to see us, they may present with one issue. And often by the time they leave, we've told them they don't just have one problem, they might have four or five. We certainly don't say, yes, let's look at that and then let's think positive. It's not the way we've been trained and it's not the way we work. Instead, a good lawyer will ask more and more questions. 
We will try and see if they have other areas of risk or concern. We will see if they have anything else to worry about. Often the client will leave and we have just taken on four or five additional problems. It doesn't sound like much as this is our job, but when we do this daily, it soon becomes a habit. Always look for the problem. Think of all the negatives. If there is not currently a problem, think about the perceived problems. So don't just worry about the past, worry about the present. And don't forget to be a good lawyer, you should also worry about the future. The nature of a lawyer, and in many respects being part of the corporate world, is dealing with problems. Day in and day out, we are involved with issues, setbacks and difficulties. In many cases, the nature of our work involves being front and centre in a variety of stressful situations. We can often underestimate the effects of our field of employment on our mental health and the way that we view life. What we do for a living can have so many flow on effects in our personal life. We are carrying the burdens of others and this is mentally and emotionally exhausting. We need to service a car, we need to top up the gas, the mind is no different. We need to care for it before it too becomes exhausted. One of the ways we can provide this care is by positive thinking and giving the mind a little rest from all the problems. Think back. Life wasn't always this difficult. I want you to have a think back to a time before you were trained to see problems and provide a disclaimer before everything you said. Once upon a time, when even though things might not have been going to plan, you were trying your best to believe that everything would be okay anyway. Positive thinking was just your natural outlook. It might have been a time before your legal profession or further back to a childhood filled with dreams and play. My once upon a time was when I was younger, visiting my favorite store with my grandparents. I called it the magic shop. I now know that it was in fact a new age store. I became fascinated by magic and crystals. And like most children, I was open to believing in dreams and that wishes could come true. We spent hours in that store and I loved the way that I felt in it. A feeling I can still remember now. The magic shop had it all. Spells for happiness, improved health, crystals to attract love, you name it, they had a mystical solution for it. What I loved the most about the store was the feeling of hope. And in my mind, they had a way to fix everything. To me, it really was the magic shop and made me believe that all the good in life really was attainable. So what happened? As I got older, slowly my inclination to turn to these alternate solutions faded. And in some respects, so did my optimism. Throughout my legal studies, my belief in wonder and mysticism had been overruled by facts and evidence. My positive way of thinking was flipped to considering what can go wrong in every situation and weighing up the element of risk associated with almost every activity. I was so focused on my studies and becoming the perfect lawyer that I forgot all about that excited and curious little girl once inside. After years of sacrifice and stress, it was time for me to find that spark of happiness again, to see the good in the world and not just focus on the problems I spend my day solving. My own experience of the impact of stress prompted me to change my ways before I spent a lifetime with stress-related health challenges. It was time for me to become a corporate hippie. So let me explain what I mean by a corporate hippie. I'm not talking about the hippies from the 60s, psychedelics and flower power. I'm talking about a new wave of hippie, a hippie of the modern era, which we can define. A merging of the corporate skills we have worked so hard to learn 
and some alternate wellness ways to help us get through the daily grind of this corporate way of life. We need to find a happy medium between the what can go wrong attitude that's ingrained in us in our profession and letting some of the what can go right. Now, if you're not a naturally positive person, sometimes trying to think about things in a different way is challenging. It takes conscious and sustained effort to retrain our brains. To think one or two positive thoughts is easy enough, but to actually incorporate this way of thinking into your daily life can be challenging. Once it becomes routine, positive thinking really can change our health and our life. Of course, professional help is always available and should be consulted. Positive thinking can work hand in hand with your medical treatment. You don't have to choose between the two. Just like you don't have to choose to be a corporate or a hippie. Of course, there are days when I don't want to be positive. I don't want to hear about others who are positive. My patience and tolerance levels run low. I let my anxiety and worries take over. What I do know is that whenever these feelings surface, I acknowledge them and I know that I have not been addressing my stress. Most importantly, I have not been addressing my mindset. The power of our mindset is remarkable. Whether we have a positive or negative mindset, affects everything we do, from our work to our relationships. When our mind is set on something, we believe beyond doubt that a certain outcome will take place. The placebo effect using medicine is astonishing. It demonstrates the power of the mind and the influence of positive thinking. The Oxford Dictionary defines the placebo effect as a beneficial effect produced by a placebo drug or treatment, which cannot be attributed to the properties of the placebo itself and must therefore be due to the patient's belief in that treatment. I find this absolutely fascinating. So for myself, as a bit of a skeptic initially, I turn to this thought often as it is the way that I try to understand positive thinking and its effects. I look at my daughter and I am still absolutely amazed at how we can kiss everything better or use a band-aid to solve all sorts of life's problems. It's not just woo-woo. There is scientific evidence backing this stuff up. The mind is a very powerful tool. We need to tap into this placebo effect more often, even if it is just a strategy to feel more positive. When I first decided to change my way of thinking and get my hair back, I looked into all sorts of things. I brought crystals to help with hair loss, ease stress and anxiety. I didn't know if they were going to work and I really did struggle to make a connection as it went against my analytical way of thinking. I didn't understand enough about the world of crystals to know if they would work but I did know some of the science behind the placebo effect. So I thought to myself, they will either work because of the mystical powers they supposedly hold, or they will work because of the placebo effect. And either way, I will be happy with the result. I'm not saying that this way of thinking will work for everyone, but it is an, illusion, it is an illustration that there are lots of little tricks to nudge us in the right direction of positive thoughts. If placing a crystal on my bedside, so it is the first thing that I see in the morning when I wake up, can serve as a positive reminder that a good day awaits, then I want as many reminders set in my busy day to pause, breathe, reflect, and then get back to work. If we can develop strategies to be a high flyer, then surely we can learn to be more positive too. Treat yourself as the legal problem and find your own solution to happiness. Do what you do best. Research and find the most effective solution. How can you be a corporate hippie? Throwing around a positive mantra or affirmation just isn't enough. How many of us have stuck notes to walls, quotes in books, only to never look at them again? I know I have. 
and I know that I could be using these resources very differently. See, in the law, we would never say close enough is good enough. So why do we feel that it's okay to do this to ourselves? Without actually making efforts to put our thoughts and actions back on the positive track. So let's start treating these alternate wellness practices the way that they would be treated if they were part of our corporate world. Let's schedule them into the diary to start to make a habit and safeguard our health and well-being so we are better equipped to maintain this profession successfully long term. There are so many different things that we can try and these do not have to conflict with any of your other belief systems. Just choose something you're comfortable with. Here are a few easily accessible things that you can try. Read an affirmation. Don't just print it, actually read it. Sit with it and refer to it. Set time aside, whether it's in the morning or evening, where you repeat an affirmation relevant to your situation. It could be as simple as, this is a great day. Listen to a song that evokes feelings of happiness and better yet, create a happiness playlist. Look at some photos that make you feel happy and put these pictures in frames in places you will see often. Positive memories will start to change your mindset. Listen to a meditation and really commit to it. It will not work for you by just having it stored on your phone. These can be anywhere from five minutes to an hour. Start small, sit for five minutes. Or walking meditations are a great way to be present in nature and get your dose of exercise in for the day. Practice mindfulness. Mindfulness has even been included in the core curriculum at Monash University. At any moment of the day, you can take a moment to pause, breathe and relax. This is something that can be as simple as a breathing exercise of counting slowly back from 10. Sign up to your yoga class. You can be a beginner and the practice of movement and paying attention to your breath can improve mood and mental well-being. And get that self-help book off the bookshelf and read it. It will mean so much more if you actually practice it. Maybe you will switch out screen time before bed and read to wind down for a restful sleep. Just the other day, I was feeling a little flat not physically ill or in need of medical treatment, just flat. So I called a healer and had a session over Zoom. You know what? It actually worked wonders. My mood instantly lifted and it really was like magic. There are people trained in all sorts of practices that can help boost our positivity, whether it's online or in your local area. But we have to be open to the possibilities and let them in. Whatever you do, don't be ashamed to try these new things. Don't worry if someone tells you they won't work and don't worry if you get an odd comment. Initially, our analytical brains may struggle, but we have to remember we don't need to use that analytical brain all the time. We get so caught up in the how and the why that we forget the most important part is just to give things a try. In our field, we are so often portrayed as experts, but we are not always going to be the expert on everything. And sometimes we won't necessarily understand why something works, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't try it and see if we can benefit from it anyway. My corporate life has taught me to be strong, courageous, and have a sound work ethic. And my alternate wellbeing practices are lowering my stress levels and helping me to build resilience. They are helping me to be more positive. These are the tools I need to be successful in my career and fulfilled in my personal life. We can change the way we think. We can change the way we do things by making small but meaningful changes in our daily lives. We don't have to wait for a health scare or have a spiritual awakening, discard any of our values or beliefs. We can just start this process slowly and incorporate these ideas into the corporate little beings that we are. The stressful situations won't change, but the way we respond can. We can all ask, 
what the little hippie inside would do. I am definitely ready to continue this challenge and I sincerely hope that you will join me. Together, let's be the new wave of corporate hippie. Thank you so much for listening to me.